Okay, um, it's September the 30th, 2017. Um, it's been a while since uh, I've made a video, and I've made a few changes to there since the uh, the last video. Uh, the most important one is uh, I've installed a TrueTrack Autopilot. Uh, if, as some of you may recall, originally I had a directional gyro and an attitude indicator, and I've taken all that stuff out uh, and uh, got rid of the weight, and... Um, and I've installed a true track Gemini autopilot in its place. And uh, I promised the folks at True Track that I would uh, do a video for them and uh, try to get it published because uh, I really couldn't find anything on the net in regards to a Gemini autopilot when I was originally looking for one. So um, hopefully this will give just a quick overview of of what uh, the the Gemini autopilot from True Track will do, uh, we've got the engine running, the avionics are on, and everything. And uh, when I installed the autopilot, I originally installed uh, installed it with a master kill switch, and it also has an autopilot level button. So uh, if something happens and you become disoriented uh, or you develop vertigo in flight, you can punch the automatic level button, and it'll bring the airplane back to straight and level flight. So we'll go ahead and boot it up. Power's coming on. It'll go through a check process, and uh, okay, it turned white. That means it's talking to the GPS, and you can watch. Uh, it's going to give us a, uh, a a slaved gyro indication. It'll get all of its information through a serial data connection to the GPS. And the first thing you have to do uh, when you first boot it up, uh, every time the power comes on, is you have to sync, sync it to the altimeter. So we'll do that. You do two clicks to the right. Uh, the the, the true track is set up to where all of your vertical inputs are on the right, all the lateral information and so forth is on the left. So what we'll do is we'll go click twice, and uh, the altimeter setting is 30.32, so we'll go to 30 point 32, push in on the button, and then we'll, we'll sync it to 620 feet, which is the field elevation, and, and we're good to go. Now, the, the autopilot uh, can be used for an altitude pre-select, so if you know uh, what altitude you want to climb to and maintain, you can go ahead and set that. Uh, you don't have to, you can take off with it, and, uh, and it'll just act uh, basically like an attitude indicator. Uh, but uh, for the interest of time, and to make the video as short as possible, we're going to go ahead and do an altitude pre-select. And uh, what we do is we just go click once to the right, and we'll set it at 2,000 feet and go click, uh, push in on the button one time, and the altitude is set at 2,000. Now, what we would do is if we would take off, uh, as soon as we would engage the autopilot with one push of the button in, uh, whatever rate of climb the airplane was in at the time that I pushed the button, uh, it will maintain that or attempt to maintain that, that rate of climb uh, until it uh, intercepts 2,000 feet and... Uh, uh, and then it, the airplane will level off and it'll maintain that heading that we were in when I pushed the button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it would be if we were going to try to go on a cross country. So anyway, I'm going to put a, a destination in the GPS. Okay, we've got a destination in the GPS, and you'll notice that the uh, directional gyro turned blue. That means that it is now receiving a flight plan information from uh, the serial connection to the GPS, so uh, everything is good. So we'll go ahead and take off. Hopefully the, uh, the camera mount won't shake too bad. Traffic Cherokee, left 5 Lima is 50 miles east, left traffic, runway 7.
kind of late in the evening. I've been trying to wait for the, the weather to lay down a little bit or the winds to lay down. So uh, uh, the autopilot does remarkably well in smooth air and rough air, but I wanted to, to demonstrate it in smooth air so it uh, wasn't complete. They set the testing one two testing. Don't set the inter, uh, intercom squelch, and I think that's better. All right, here we go. We're going to blast off as soon as we clear the obstacles. We will engage the autopilot, and it will take us uh, turn and uh, continue the climb to 2,000 feet and, uh, and uh, take us uh, towards our destination. While we're climbing out here, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Obviously, it works just like an attitude indicator, but uh, miles per hour is on the left, altitude's on the right. Of course, you can see the ribbon climbing. And uh, uh, turn to bank indicator is the small square at the top, and I need to add a little bit of right rudder. It's a little rough. Okay, we're going to continue on this heading and uh, slow our rate of climb a little. Okay, right now we're doing about 600 feet a minute. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go push the autopilot and it's showing that the airplane is in an 800 feet per minute climb and we're selected the track of 338. That's what the heading was when we took off. So what we want to do is we want it to navigate towards our destination. So we'll go one click to the left. And now we're in GPS nav mode. On uh, traffic, Cherokee 150. Now if you'll notice the airplane's making a left turn. Left downwind, runway 7. And you'll notice when we start getting close to 2,000 feet, it will capture the altitude and it'll go, it'll switch to hold and it'll let us know that there it went. And that's to let us know that the altitude or the autopilot is going to capture the altitude. On oh, the traffic, Cherokee 15 Lima is uh, now eight miles east. We'll be making a straight in runway 25. This airplane is really squirrely, and I have the uh, pitch trim uh, set for a slow reaction because uh, it just absolutely beats you to death. It, it wants to hunt uh, in rough weather. Uh, but it, it'll settle right down, and then it'll do 2,000 feet. And if you'll notice there, it varied uh, a little less than 100 feet, uh, 50 foot plus, 50 foot minus. So, okay, now we're en route to our destination, and let's say that the... Uh, Air traffic control uh, gives us a heading to fly to, uh, for instance, to intercept a localizer or something. So what we need to do is we'll just uh, we'll just tell it to select track, and we'll select north, and the airplane will gradually. You can watch the directional gyro. It will. Continue the turn, a very slow turn. I'm going to check your 15 lane as a four mile final on my 25. Okay, air traffic control has uh, cleared us direct destination now. So what we'll do is we'll go one click to the left and that'll put us back in GPS nav mode.
And while you were watching the, the uh, autopilot, I changed the, the destination to get us away from some local traffic here. All right, so uh, we don't want to be bounced around down here anymore, and uh, let's let's go to 2,500 feet. So what you'll do is you'll go one click to the right. We'll select 2,500. Push one time, that'll go down, and whatever's highlighted in green, that's what you're going to be changing. So I want to go up at about 400 feet a minute because, you know, basically this is an en route climb. And uh, I will push in after I get that set. And if you'll notice, it'll start a climb. And I have to add power. Now the reason it's pitching uh, uh, the way it is is it's uh, the airplane's getting buffeted quite a bit uh, due to the wind and, uh, and the thermals. In seven six one five miles clear, one two five. Seven six one five miles clear, one two five. If you notice, it's kind of smoothing out a little bit. Passing through 2300. Obviously, the it's uh, going to capture the altitude. It's uh, switched to hold. settled in the cruise. Bring the power back to our normal cruise setting. It's pretty basic stuff. Now, a lot of people have asked, you know, why in the world did you put an autopilot in a 701? And that's a, a whole other subject for, for another time. Uh, let me just say, I, I just flew to Mexico, Missouri and back for the Zenith Open House. And, uh, I flew 13 hours and I went almost all the way there and back with uh, with it on autopilot, and it was well worth the money. Now, my 701 only has a Garmin 496 in it, so uh, therefore it doesn't have any uh, approach capabilities uh, that you would have normally with a Garmin 430 or something along those lines. But the autopilot is capable of, of doing that. It'll do a GPSV mode, a vertical approach mode, a mist approach mode. And, uh, of course, I, I spoke earlier about an emergency level mode. And uh, for the money, uh, the autopilot is uh, well worth it. And one other feature that I need to mention is uh, it also has control wheel steering mode. I have a, uh, a button on the stick. And uh, what happens is when you push that and hold it, uh, you can steer the aircraft and it disconnects the servos. And whatever heading and or vertical this uh, change rate that you are in when you let loose the cold control wheel stream, but it's what the autopilot will maintain. So I'll demonstrate that feature here. So I'm going to press the control wheel steering button. You see, it's control wheel steering. We'll start to roll to the left with a little bit of a little bit of descent, and I'll let off, and you'll see. It selected track 341, and because I was not descending more than 400 feet a minute, it'll just hold the altitude that we have. Now, had I chose to put the nose down or put the, bring the nose up uh, to a four or 500 feet per minute climb rate, then it would have maintained that. So uh, we'll go back to GPS nav mode. Now, what, what it'll do is it'll go back and intercept the course uh, that we were originally flying before I punched the control wheel steering button. You know, and obviously that's handy if you see some traffic uh, all of a sudden and you need to maneuver the aircraft or, you know, for whatever reason. Now what I'm going to do is, my airfield is almost 180 degrees behind us, so I'm going to ask the GPS to take me there. So we'll go direct. 1-2 Whiskey Victor, and I'll punch enter. Enter. Now the GPS is going to do a 180 degree turn. 
And when it does, is it'll, it'll do, it'll complete the turn and it will go and intercept uh, the course that was drawn from the uh, the location that I punched the button uh, to to my field. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that it'll do a teardrop style entry back to the original course. Doing a nice standard rate turn. Here in just a moment, you'll notice that the heading will start going back to the east some. There it goes, and it's intercepting the course back to the farm. Now, the sense worked just as well as the climbs do. So uh, we're en route somewhere, and, and, and let's say that air traffic control gives us a, a, an altitude to descend to, or, you know, you just want to go down 500 feet or whatever you have to do. And again, all your vertical information is on the right. One click to the right. We dial in our altitude we want. We'll go back down to 2,000 feet. One push in, and that changes the tail, and then we got to tell it the vertical speed we we uh, wanted to do. So we'll just do 400 feet a minute, and we'll initiate it by one click in. And if you'll notice, the nose is going down, and the airspeed is going to start going up, and it'll continue on the present head.